Imagine this. A user kicks off a resource-heavy task from your app's UI. Maybe it's processing a large amount of data or running a complex report. Halfway through this, they realize they did something wrong and decides to cancel the process and hits the cancel button. The UI responds immediately, showing that the task is canceled. Problem solved, right? Wrong. Canceling a long running process by simply showing it has canceled on the UI does not cancel the actual work that is being done on the server. Your server might still be consuming those precious resources for something no one wants anymore. Depending on the kind of work, this could even be more than just being inefficient. It could cause data inconsistency issues and also misleading results. So how do you let the user cancel the request and actually cancel the work on the server as well? This is where a bot controllers and cancellation tokens comes into play. Let's exactly see that in this video. Hello everyone, my name is Rahul and welcome back to this YouTube channel. If you're new here, I make videos on .NET cloud and devops thanks to aws for sponsoring this video and it is part of my asp.net series in an earlier video we covered about cancellation tokens and how to get started using them from both a dotnet console application and also an asp.net api application in that video i used navigating away from the ui as a way to simulate a user cancelling a request now, navigating away from the UI by default triggers the cancellation token that's hooked into the HTTP context in the ASP.NET Core pipeline. This meant we did not have to write any additional code when we were doing that. However, if the user is still staying on the same page and just clicking a cancel button or just moving off to a different page in a single page application, this might not work. So how do you trigger a cancellation in this example? Let's first see the problem at hand. Here I have the API endpoint that we built in the previous video. Now, if you're completely new to cancellation tokens, I highly recommend checking out that video before going any further. Now, as a quick recap, in this video, we have a map post endpoint which uploads a large file. Now, in your application scenario, this might be different and might simulate some other larger amounts of work. In this case, I've just chose to upload a file to Amazon S3. Now, Amazon S3 is a cloud storage that's provided by AWS and can be used to store files. Now, in this case, I'm using the Amazon S3 client to create a connection with my Amazon account and upload a file into user service large messages. Now, if I navigate into my AWS console, you can see here I have the user services large messages bucket already created. Now, this is the bucket to which we're going to upload our files. Right now, I have cleared all the objects inside this. The code creates the S3 client and uses the put object request, reads the file from the stream that's coming in. So the post request will have a file upload request, which we will use to upload the file. So this reads the stream and writes it to S3 with the same file name. Now, in this controller method, we are injecting in a cancellation token, which will be the default that is wired to the HTTP context. So anytime a user navigates away, this cancellation token will be triggered. We are passing on the same cancellation token to our S3 client put object as well. So in cases where these files are large and it takes extra time to upload the file, if the user cancels midway through the request, we will cancel the upload of the request as well to S3, which means the file wouldn't be uploaded. But this cancellation token needs to be triggered. So let's see an example where we have a simple UI application which uploads a file to this API endpoint. So I have written a simple HTML file, which has inline JavaScript and designs as well. Now, I didn't want to choose any specific frameworks for this because I just wanted to show a simple UI. And in fact, an AI generated this for me. So if I scroll down, all we have here is a button with a form element that allows you to upload this file. So if I right click and browse this file, so let's go to open in and choose browser and select the default browser. So we have the page which has a form that allows us to choose a file and upload and cancel. Now, when we upload this, it's going to hit our API endpoint and send the chosen file to that endpoint. Let's click choose file and select the file to upload and click the upload button. Now, this is going to hit our API endpoint. As you can see here, it creates the S3 client 
and puts the object. So let's step through this. This is going to upload the object to our S3 bucket, perform some additional tasks and return OK. Now since this was a small file, this happened relatively quicker. The UI also says that the upload is completed successfully. Now let's see the case where a file is much larger and if the user clicks the cancel button. So let's click the choose file again and choose a large file in this case and click upload. Now in this case, it's again going to hit the breakpoint. So let's start the work and let's also put a breakpoint in perform additional tasks. So let's continue the execution. And while that's happening, let's click the cancel button. Now it says the upload is canceled for the user on the UI. However, what's happening back in our server? So if we switch back to our rider, you can see that this is still continuing the execution, has successfully uploaded the file just now, even after the user clicked the cancel button. Now in this case, it's awaiting to perform the additional tasks, which it's also going to do, and it's going to return and result okay. Now in this case, this UI is completely ignoring the response that's come from that HTTP request because it has already canceled and moved on with a different flow. Probably the user might have chosen another file to upload again and performed the action. This could also be running large reports or also doing other resource intensive work on your application server. So how do we handle this so that the actual request also gets canceled? This is where an abort controller comes into play. The abort controller interface represents a controller object that allows you to abort one or more web requests as and when desired. Now, when using the abort controller and signaling an abort on it, it will also trigger the actual cancellation token that's wired to that HTTP request. So you can create a new abort controller using the abort controller constructor. So let's see this in action. So in our simple HTML file, you can see that I'm using the fetch API to perform the post request to our endpoint. Now in this case, let's create a new abort controller instance. So let's say the abort controller is a new instance of the abort controller. So in this case, let's use the constructor and create a new instance. Now when making a fetch call, we can also pass in an extra property, which is called the signal. Now we can pass the signal as the abort controller's signal. So in this case, let's use the new created instance and pass in the signal property from that. Now, whenever you need to cancel this specific request, you can call the abort controller dot abort, which will invoke this signal and that will fire off the cancellation token to this API request. So in the cancel button code, where right now I just have a reset form, let me also trigger the abort controller. So let's go ahead and let's specify the abort controller dot abort. Now this is a method on the abort controller. So let's invoke that. Now, when the abort is called, the fetch promise rejects with a DOM exception named the abort error. So in this case, it doesn't flow through the normal request response pipeline, but it goes to the catch block if you have specified one. So if I navigate back here, I have a catch block already where it's simply logging the error. So let me add some code in here to also check if this is of an abort error, then say upload cancelled. Otherwise, it's going to simply say that an error occurred during the upload. So let's save this and refresh this again. So let's come back to our browser. Let's refresh this page and choose a file to upload again. So let's select the large file and click upload. Now this is going to hit our API endpoint as before, and it's going to start uploading this file. Now I also have a breakpoint inside the catch in here. So let's see what happens. So let's continue the execution. Let's come back and while the upload is happening, let's click cancel. Now in this case, the operation canceled exception is called on the API endpoint as well which means the file wasn't uploaded and it stopped midway to that upload because this cancellation token was canceled because the abort controller was canceled. So in this case, if I continue this execution, that HTTP request is also canceled along with our UI saying that the upload is canceled. However, note that inside the UI, the code flow will also take the exception path. Now, in this case, we're not going to have the path of the response. However, this is going to throw an exception and go into the catch block and block that specific error. So now if I switch over to my Amazon S3, you can see we just have the initial two objects that we uploaded. We don't have the file that we uploaded the third time. To see this again in action, if you want, we can clear all these objects. So let's delete everything. Now this bucket does not have any files. So let's go back to our demo, choose a file and upload the same file and click upload. 
and let's continue the execution and click the cancel button. Now in this case, it again aborts and it returns back to the user. Now if I come back to our user messages, you can see the file wasn't uploaded. Now if we don't cancel the request, the file will be uploaded in the happy path scenario and it will perform the additional tasks and continue the execution on the server side. So this is where the user uploads the right file and chooses to continue doing that until it's successfully completed. So once that is done, we can see that the file will be there in our S3 bucket and you can use this file in any other business scenarios. I hope this helps you to understand how to use a bot controller from the UI and trigger off or signal the HTTP request cancellation. This is extremely useful in cases where you are having large resource intensive work that your server needs to do and the user aborts them midway. If you like this video, please make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Thank you and see you soon in the next video.